What's going on guys? Today I have a really quick tutorial for you guys. This one is just an idea I thought up on my own. And what it is is a volcanic eruption that goes up and then you kind of have like a lava that washes over the keyboard and following that you have ashes that cover the keyboard as well. And this lighting effect also has a really unique reactive to it. And what this reactive does is it actually goes through the rainbow cycle and then goes white and then it slowly fades to black. And then it also looks really cool when you press a bunch of keys at once. As always, in the description below, there will be a download link so that you can download this profile and have it on your PC as well. And I'm also going to run through step-by-step step everything I did to create this design. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, that way you guys see future keyboard lighting videos. We're gonna get right into this one. This one is Super Volcano. All right, guys, to start the super volcano design, what we're going to do is make a new static layer. Click on the spectrum cycling layer and just delete that layer. With this static layer, we're going to select the razor logo and your right alt key. And we're just going to put a brown color on there, just a static brown color. That's gonna represent our volcano. And hit save. And that's all we're doing with that static. Next, we're going to add a new wave layer. And with this new wave layer selected, what we're going to do is we're going to hold control and select the keys that's going to represent our volcanic eruption. So I'm going to choose these keys right here. I'm going to click on my color drop down and I'm going to choose this multicolor pattern just because it gives me every single possible node that I can have. And on the very far left, I am going to make this an invisible node and on the very far right I'm going to start making my colors so I have red and I'm gonna make this one orange and this third one I'm gonna make yellow and then I'm gonna repeat that process red orange and yellow and I'm just gonna slide all those together and then put the invisible one at the end so you can see on your gradient bar you have uh, red, orange, and yellow pattern going on on the right side of your gradient bar. That looks good. I'm going to click off of that and I'm going to change the angle up to zero degrees. Change my width percentage to 400. And I'm going to drop my speed down to about 10. Okay, that looks good. Everything else can stay the same. We'll hit save. Now, you can see the eruption is all very linear. It's all the same pattern. To mix this up, I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna select this line here, just like this. And then I'm also going to select this one up here. And I'm going to click on my color gradient and I'm gonna delete my first node here and just drag these over. And I'm gonna bring this one over and I'm gonna add a new one and make that red. And I'm just mixing up the pattern a little bit. Now you can see there's a bit of randomness to it. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to select these new keys that we just altered. And I'm going to click on the color pattern. And I'm just going to delete the first three nodes here. And I'm going to make this last one uh, invisible. So now you can see I just have a smaller section. This allows part of the eruption to start first and then these sections to start afterwards. Next, I'm going to add a new wave layer and I'm gonna go back into my first wave. I'm just gonna rename that eruption. And while in this eruption layer, I'm going to click on any of those two patterns, copy that effect, go into our new pattern and we're just gonna select the whole entire keyboard here and paste in that effect. So by pasting in the other effect, it gives us a couple things. This gradient is basically a timeline. So we know when the eruption ends right here. So we can delete all of our nodes that are to the right of this invisible one just like this. And now we can add in nodes on this side 
and we know that whatever we do on this side of this node is going to happen after the eruption that happens on the right side here. So I'm gonna add in a new node, just drag that over like so. So now we can work from this node over and whatever we put in here will follow the initial eruption. Okay, so I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this over and just add in as many nodes as I can until I don't have any more. Just like that. Here I'm gonna make this red, drag that in close, orange, yellow, repeat, red, and then I'm gonna skip to yellow here. Just like this, and this is going to stay invisible, and I'm just going to trap that all in. So now you have another little section of your gradient, which is going to happen after your initial eruption. Click off of that, and we're just gonna angle this back down at 180 degrees, and that looks good right there. I'm gonna hit save. So now you can see from the preview, the eruption goes up, and as soon as it finishes going up, the lava comes back down and covers the keyboard. So same thing we did with the initial eruption going up. We're going to change the patterns a little bit here. So I'm going to select this line and I'm gonna skip two lines, just like this. And with these selected, I'm going to, once again, click on my gradient. I'm gonna delete the red node again, and I'm going to drag all of these over Drag this one out a little bit, add in a new one, and then close it back up. And then I'm gonna make this one at the end red. So that just moves my pattern over a little bit, which adds a little bit of randomness, as you can see with the preview. While I'm in this one, I'm just going to select the first three colors here and delete them out and drag that in. That looks good, I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna go to the next line over and then once again, I'm just gonna skip two lines. So I'm gonna select these right here. And once again, I'm going to actually delete the yellow one this time. And I'm gonna drag this over. I'm gonna drag this out a little bit, click on my red one, add a new node. I'm gonna make this new one yellow. I'm gonna drag it in and pull that back in. Now we have another random pattern. This time I'm going to delete out the left side. Delete, delete, delete. Drag that over and we're gonna keep this right here. I'm gonna actually pull that out a little bit and add in an orange. So now we have red, orange, and yellow. Just like this and hit save. So now you can see with our falling lava splash, you can see there's a lot of randomness to it. It's not linear anymore and it looks like it's falling across the keyboard. So I'm gonna rename this layer to lava wash because the lava basically kind of washes over the keyboard. We're gonna do another wave layer that's going to add to the whole lava effect. We are going to copy uh, this first line here that has our full gradient and we're going to copy that effect. We're going to create a new wave layer. With this new wave layer we're going to select all of the keys once again and just paste in that effect in there. So here's the effect that we did on our last layer. This gives us once again a timeline of where we can start the ash falling. So I'm gonna delete everything to the right of this left node. And then once again, I'm going to drag this node over here and add in some pattern to the left. So this looks good right here for me. Uh, I'm gonna leave the first, third, and fifth nodes invisible. And these nodes in here, I'm going to make a dark gray. For this, I'm gonna use 0A, 0A, 0A. Same with this one, 0A, 0A, 0A. So I'm gonna drag this node over to the left and add a new one. It's gonna duplicate that gray, and then I'm gonna pull that 
over here. Same thing on this side, duplicate that one, drag it over. And that looks good for me. If you guys have a keyboard that doesn't have lights as bright as mine as a V2 version, then you're gonna wanna make this a lighter color gray in here. But because mine reflects light very well, I'm gonna keep mine down at 0A, 0A, 0A. Just do whatever works best for your keyboard. So that looks good. I'm gonna hit save and I'm just going to hold control and start randomly selecting a bunch of keys in here. So I selected these keys right here and I'm just gonna hit the delete key. That removes the effect from those keys. What I'm gonna do now is hold control and just select about half of these keys. So here I've selected about half of my keys that have the effect on it. And I'm going to click on my color gradient and I'm gonna delete one of the grays. Delete these out. And I'm going to delete this invisible. I'm gonna drag this gray section to about the middle of where my area is here and just pinch that in. So this will add a little bit of randomness to your ash fall. So now, as you can see from the preview, you have a volcanic eruption with some lava wash that's washing over the keyboard and it's followed by ash sprinkling over your keyboard. Now the last thing I did with this effect is I made a custom reactive design. So to make this custom reactive, what we're gonna do is make a wave layer. So with this new wave layer, I'm just going to rename it to reactive. And what I'm gonna do with this layer is I'm going to select all of the keys on my keyboard and I'm gonna click on my color gradient. I'm gonna make a multicolor wave pattern and I'm gonna slide all of these nodes over here to the right just like this. This first node I'm gonna make black. The second node I'm going to make white. And starting from the right side here, I'm going to do red, yellow, green, blue, and pink. So you can see from this gradient bar up here, you have a rainbow effect and then it goes to white and fades to black. So that actually looks perfect. I'm gonna click off of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my start to on selected keys. And I'm going to end after one time. Now to get this wave to act like a reactive, you have to change the code for every key on your keyboard. Each key has to be its own unique hex code or color. So to make every key unique, what we're going to do is we're going to click on each individual key, click on our color gradient, and starting with pink, we are going to change the hex code of each key. And if you don't know what a hex code is, it's basically um, values of red, green, and blue. So the first two digits represent what value of the color red, the second two digits represent what value of the color green, and the last two digits represent blue. So changing the last digit in each of these colors will change the pattern or change the color between two individual keys. So we're going to work in this second, fourth, and sixth digit space. So for this first key, I'm gonna leave it alone because this is our original. I'm gonna go to this next key and I'm gonna change my pink from FF00FF to FF01FF. With my next key, same thing. Go into my pink, change that digit to a two this time, and so on and so forth. And you're just gonna do this all the way down the line so with this next key, you can take this digit all the way up to nine. And then once you hit nine, what I did is I moved on to the blue. So here you can see you have zeros for the first four digits. I took this digit from one to nine, and then I went to this digit one to nine. And I did this all the way down my keyboard, 
going through each one of these individual colors. And then when you get to the bottom, you'll run out of space. You can even come back to this blue and you can make this digit a one and this digit a one. And you just keep changing the last value of each color until you have a different code for every single key on your keyboard. So scrolling in here on the keyboard, you'll see that when I press the F1 key, it cycles through the rainbow color and then it goes white and fades to black. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around. That way you guys don't miss out on upcoming keyboard lighting videos. If you guys have any ideas, please be sure to put it down in the comments section. You can also contact me on my social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, and you can even check me out on Twitch. I stream every once in a while. Please go check those out. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.